Okay, so today we're going to talk about single replacement reactions. Single replacement reactions um, are kind of the simplest form of redox or oxidation reduction reactions. And so they'll sort of give us a, like a good starting entry point into seeing how the oxidation number stuff and that stuff that we talked about um, in the past is going to essentially work in actual reactions. So the essential point of what happens in an oxidation reduction or in a single replacement reaction, which is a type of oxidation reduction reaction, is that we're going to have a usually a solid metal that is then going to take the place of or switch out places with an aqueous metal. Okay, so this metal is zinc. It's in an aqueous solution. It's zinc nitrate, and so the magnesium is going to take its place. And if we look at the products, what we've got over here is magnesium nitrate now, and then we've got solid zinc there at the end okay now we'll talk in a few minutes about how that doesn't always have to be a metal but that sort of the standard scenario for a single replacement is one metal replacing another metal a solid metal replacing an aqueous phase metal a couple of things to note here as you're thinking about this is that um, keep in mind that um, these don't just make a straight swap out that we've got to make sure that our charges are balanced it just so happens in my example that zinc and magnesium both have two plus charges, okay? And so that, therefore they're gonna end up with the same number of nitrates when we cancel out the charges to make sure that we're making the correct ionic compound. What this is always gonna to lead to also is that we started with one metal in, a, in its zero oxidation state, sort of its normal natural form, and we're gonna end with the other metal in its solid uh, zero oxidation state. We'll talk a little bit about that as we get to the end of the video. So the question would become like, how do we know if one metal replaces another? I mean, like if they all are gonna replace each other, it's just sort of like this endless, constant cyclical loop that's never really gonna stop. And so there has to be some sort of method to determine, does this metal replace this other metal? And so there, there absolutely is a way to tell that, and we call that way the activity series. The activity series gives us a way to compare metals to see which metal is more active, or we could also say more reactive, than the other metal. And the way this works is that the most active metal is going to replace the lower activity metal. And so this is essentially, if you look at this chart, it says decreasing reactivity. Another way to, way to say that would be the higher up they are, the more active they are, okay? And the lower they are, the less active they are. So like if we had the case of, we had this, uh, solid silver and we're trying to replace it in a case of like calcium nitrate or something like that, well, silver is not going to replace calcium because silver is way less active than calcium is. And so since calcium is much more active, then we wouldn't get a reaction. We'll talk about that here in just a second. So essentially, when we're looking at activity series, we're looking to see if one metal is higher than the other metal. So let's look at that for the example that we had. So for our case, we had magnesium and we had zinc. And so we're going to look on the table. And we're going to see that magnesium is right there. Zinc is right there, and magnesium is indeed above zinc. So that means the magnesium is going to take zinc's place. It's going to swap out. It's going to be a single replacement. A single element goes in and swaps out with another single element. So therefore, we're going to get magnesium nitrate, and we're going to get solid zinc. And again, just, just to be sure that, like, if you're remembering how this works, once I know that magnesium is going to take its place, and we're going to form a compound with magnesium and nitrate, we would make sure that we put our charges there. Okay, nitrate obviously has a negative one. That's a polyatomic, so we wanna make sure we put it in parentheses. And then we crisscross, right? And remember that the whole reason we're doing that is so that we can make sure that we're canceling out the charges because we have to cancel out the charges to get the proper ionic formula, okay? And so that's what we get. That is exactly what we see right there. Okay, so that's, that's a case where it does happen, where the metal was more active than the other and it swaps out with it. So what, what's a case where maybe it, maybe it does not? Okay, so if we look at this case, we've got the same magnesium, but instead of trying to replace a zinc nitrate, we're, we're putting it into a solution of lithium nitrate. And so when we look at the activity series here, then what we see is we've got lithium is pretty much the tippity top here. In other words, nothing's really going to replace lithium in a single replacement reaction. And so what that means for us is that we're not going to get a reaction. Magnesium can't switch places with lithium. And so we just write no reaction. Now, of course, those of you all who, um, specifically those of you all who are my high school students are looking at this going, that's fantastic. That's the easiest thing possible, right? No reaction. I don't have to crisscross. I don't have to bounce. I don't have to do any of that. 
And that's exactly right. That's the same as it was in double replacement reactions when you didn't get a precipitate or water or anything like that out of the reaction. Same type of deal. Just write no reaction and then go on with it. Now, I mentioned before that it doesn't have to be metals, okay? Um, it, it probably 85, 90% of the time that you're going to see these, it's going to be metals. But we can also do a single replacement um, reaction with halogens as well. Um, and in this case, what you would see by itself is the halogen. So you see that it's fluorine, it's elemental fluorine in its normal form. Remember, fluorine is diatomic in its natural state. And of course, fluorine is a gas, not a solid. So if we were actually doing this, we'd probably have to like bubble the fluorine through the salt solution that we have here. And then since the activity series typically isn't going to include these types of things on there, the activity series pretty much is always for metals. What we essentially use as our activity series then is just the periodic table. We look at group 17 on the periodic table. Fluorine is the most active, then chlorine, then bromine, then iodine. And so same rules apply. The higher up they are, they'll replace the lower things. So fluorine is higher than chlorine, and so it's going to swap out and take its place. Now you'll notice here that I did not balance this reaction. That's okay. Um, we could definitely balance it. Obviously, we just throw a two in front of this and a two in front of that one. Um, but what we did do is make sure that we balance the charges, okay? Sodium has a plus one charge. Fluorine has a negative one, so it's going to be one of each of those things. And then obviously, when we get to the end, then we could go back and do our balancing if we really wanted to. Um, of, of course, if we were doing a double replacement reaction, then we would be doing a net ionic equation, right? We'll talk about that in just a second, how that can happen here um, on single replacements as well. So fluorine is going to replace the chlorine, it is more active than it is. And again, you're not going to see a ton of the halogens, but you'll see enough that you know you, you at least need to know how that works. All right, so we said at the beginning that the whole reason that we're concerned with this is that single replacement reactions are redox reactions. They are oxidation reduction reactions. And so let's look at that real quick. If we assign oxidation numbers to our elements, particularly um, to our elements that are are metals. Now, you, you might say, well, shouldn't we assign it to everything? Kind of. Um, I don't really need to in this case because I kind of know that the nitrate here doesn't matter, but we could do this as well. That's fine. We'll do them just for completion's sake. Magnesium's in its solid state. Zinc is going to break apart into a monatomic ion, so its oxidation number is going to be its charge, which is plus two. Um, we ought to know that oxygen is negative two unless it's in a peroxide or by itself. And so in, the, in this case, that's going to make this nitrogen is going to be plus five. Now, since it's nitrate on both sides, I still know that this is going to be plus five and this is going to be negative two. So nothing happened with the nitrate. Kind of what you expect out of nitrate, right? When we did double replacement reactions, when we did precipitation, nitrates are always soluble. They're pretty much always spectators. They're just on the Olympic standing around team, right? So we're not really concerned with them in terms of what's going on in the actual reaction. Now we come over here to this side though, and remember magnesium is gonna break off and become a monatomic ion. So that has an oxidation state equal to its charge, so that's plus two. And then we come over here to zinc. Zinc is now a solid in its natural state, so it has an oxidation state of zero. Now what does that mean to us in terms of oxidation reduction? Well, that essentially means that we can sort of split these things up into two things going on. And for those of you all that are going to take higher chemistry, um, higher level chemistry, AP and college level chemistry, you're going to do a lot of splitting of oxidation reduction reactions into two half reactions, we'll call them. And I'm just going to give you a real short intro here just so you can sort of see how it works. Essentially, what's going on in this reaction is two things. Solid magnesium is becoming oxidized into its aqueous ion, okay, with a charge. So it was neutral magnesium in its solid form. Now it is magnesium with a plus two charge in its aqueous state. And then zinc that had a two plus charge in its aqueous state is now being reduced to having a zero oxidation state and to being its solid state. This also, by the way, sort of helps maybe some of you all to explain what's going on with the terminology here, which is that in the case of oxidation, our oxidation number went up Okay, it was oxidized, so that makes pretty good sense. Um, and why would it be oxidized? Well, really, what we could throw in here, and, and guys, don't sweat this too hard. Don't let this like be what throws you off. But really, what happens in every oxidation reduction reaction is there's a transfer of electrons. So really, what happens here is that there are two electrons. Okay, the magnesium becomes an ion, and this ion plus two electrons would be 
the neutral magnesium, which kind of makes sense. That also means over here on this side that the same thing is going to happen in this case. Now, in this case, it is reduction. Okay, reduction is we're gaining electrons, okay, which means that the oxidation state is going to go down. It went from plus two to zero. So real quick, let me label these real quick just so you can make sure that you know what's going on there. That is oxidation and that is reduction. Okay, so hopefully that makes pretty good sense. Um, hopefully that'll give you enough examples that you can really look at some single replacement reactions and figure out what's going on.